Hey, so I'm going to see my internet's a little bit weird today. So we're going to get right in it that way. If my internet doesn't hold out, we will be fine. So I wanted to give a few tips on how to recognize self-sabotage. And I'm sorry, my um, background is a little bit messy today. But, okay, so how to recognize self-sabotage. Um, I dealt with that for a little while and I've done a lot of research on it and I wanted to kind of share with you a little bit of what I found because I see it now. Now that I'm aware of what that looks like, now, I'm now that I'm aware of it, I wanted to, um, I see it all the time. And so I wanted to share a little bit about what happens, what you can see. Because the first step in getting rid of self-sabotage and um, going beyond the limits that we've set and programmed for ourselves and we've been programmed with is to recognize when it happens. So before giving you keys on how to overcome self-sabotage, the first step is to recognize when it's happening. And so um, a couple of things, I, I know that a lot of you that are watching are in the same industry that I am, I'm in network marketing, and um, I've been in it for several years and I love helping mamas um, especially those with little kids just um, make a little bit of extra income online because that's something that I um, needed when my kids were younger that's when I got into the industry and I didn't have somebody to tell me how to do it correctly I didn't have somebody to tell me how to do it right without being spammy without being um, just like in people's faces <laughs> and so I did all the wrong things so now I help mamas do it right um, so that's a little bit about me, but so recognizing self-sabotage in helping to develop leaders and to develop, um, uh, mamas and helping them make an extra income. I wanted to share that because that has the potential to stop everything that you're doing. And, um, I don't want that for you. It stopped everything I was doing several times in my, in my career and, um, I don't want that for you. So one of the things that you can recognize with self-sabotage is, first of all, have you ever been in what we call, I like to call it survival mode. Like with my family, we've called it survival mode. You know, we've been, we've had wealth and then we've also been dirt poor. And when we are, um, when we really struggle with money, sometimes we can revert to, to survival mode, which means you everything shifts in and and gets real close and everything all the focus is on you and your immediate family surviving whatever's going on whatever crisis is going on this can happen for lack of money this can happen when you um are changing like sometimes it can happen when you're moving from one city to another because the everything is completely different you have to to redo your habits you have to relearn where you are so we can default to survival mode um this can happen when somebody passes away this can also happen when you are dealing with constant emotional crisis of someone else like someone else's emotional response can start triggering you to respond back to them with like immediately trying to figure out how to fix it and that's like survival mode like just honing in like everything narrows down is all about you and it's all about surviving and you and whoever you're looking at it's all about you and them surviving and not and not thriving so the problem with that is that it can create um like you, you the more we're in it i was in it for years i was in that mind space for years like right after having kids especially because kids having kids was the hardest most beautiful thing i've ever done <laughs> so but it put me in survival mode right after i had kids i had three kids in three years and um it put me in this mode of it's just about me and keeping those kids alive and that's it i could not focus on anyone else outside of that for, for a few years. Thank God I'm out of that. But um, so that can also trigger, trigger a survival mode. So you end up strategizing, you end up um, trying to figure out how to make things work, how to fit pieces in together to keep people alive. And that can become a comfortable place that you're in, right? That can become familiar. This is what you do. This is who you are. 
this is how you deal with things, this is how you perceive the world, this is, like, everything's about you surviving and, and you trying to provide the best for your family, your immediate family. There's not any room for anything outside of that. There's not any room for helping people. There's not any room for, you know, thinking about anything else. There's just not a bandwidth, a capacity for that. So why am I talking about sur survival with self-sabotage? Because when you start coming out of that place of survival mode, because we're not designed to live in survival mode. We're designed to thrive. We're designed to help people. We're designed to live with a community. We're designed to impact our community, impact the world, spread the good news, like bring hope and joy and love. Like that's what we're designed to do. But when we're in survival mode, we can't think about those things because we're surviving. Like that's it takes all of our energy and focus. So when you start taking steps to get out of survival mode, and there are steps to that, which I can probably talk about in a different video because I think that's a subject that we need to, a lot of people, I could have used that a long time ago, um, how to get out of survival mode while still being at home with the little kids. But for now, we're talking about self-sabotage. So when you start coming out of that, um, you can feel exposed right like all of a sudden i don't know you're making extra money if you're in my industry you start making a little extra money you start selling some things it feels really good you start getting people into involved in your business they're starting to have success you're starting to make things work things are going good you know um you're not worried about income as much you're 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 starting to thrive you're starting to be in a good place you're happy and then all of a sudden something happens and you freak out and you're like, this is uncomfortable. This is not like your brain freaks out and says, this isn't right. This is not familiar. This is, this is uncomfortable. Like this is different. I have to get myself back in survival mode. And, and so your brain will work to manufacture some, you know, stories or some things that are not going good or your actions will start to manufacture a crisis and it will feel very real. It will feel really true. Like I experienced this many times and there's a couple of resources that I have. If you want some of those resources to, to kind of dig into that a little bit more, just send me a message and I can, I can share what I read, what I looked at, um, to recognize these patterns in my life, but it can, um, it, your brain goes, this is new. This is different. All of a sudden she's feeling this, this something else. And it's not right. We have to protect her from that or him. Um, we have to protect them from that. And so we're going to manufacture that there's something going on that's not right. And we're going to bring her down to size to that place that's familiar. Okay. So it can be um, something happening with your kids. All of a sudden you get super anxious about letting them play outside because something might happen. Or um, it can be something with your business. Like... All of a sudden, a customer complaints is like a, this huge big deal where it really didn't have to be that big a deal. It was really a misunderstanding or customer service could have taken care of that really easily. Um, or it can be, you know, this this person saying that they're unhappy with something and all of a sudden the world's falling apart and that's it. I'm not a good business person anymore. Like our brain over emphasize, like over inflates whatever is going on and puts us into this anxiety mode, reaction mode, survival mode that it was that it was familiar with before. And so what do we do? We go, oh no, this isn't good. I have to stop, I have to stop, I have to think about this. I have to stop, I have to wait. I have to, let me think about it. Let me, let me go look for, okay, I don't have any more bandwidth for anything else for growth, for any kind of growth because I need to figure this out. And so then we stop our progress. We stop whatever it is that we're working on, you know, whatever we were doing so good at, losing weight, um, meal planning, whatever it was, we, we stop it all and we're like, I, I need to get back to this comfortable place to try and figure this out because this, this, something's not right. What we need to do in those moments is train our instinct to not listen to our brain. And that's hard to do because we as women rely on our intuition so much that we've learned to listen to our intuition. But sometimes our intuition is just there to keep us safe. It's not there to help us grow. 
right? So we have, we have this built in mama instinct that's there to keep everyone safe. But sometimes growth doesn't feel safe. Sometimes growth requires pain. Sometimes growth requires stretching. Sometimes growth requires us to get out of our comfort zone and feel a little bit insecure, feel a little bit exposed. And, and that's where growth happens is when we start feeling this, this exposed. You know, like when you're climbing a hill, it's hard, you're grinding, you're, you're moving, you're working and and then all of a sudden you get to the top and it's like all open and there's no more grind there's no more hard your muscles are not screaming at you anymore the wind is blowing through your hair you're at the top of the hill and things are going good and you're like whoo i feel so free and your brain goes oh my gosh you're gonna fall off the cliff watch out right so um that's what happens in when we when we start to self-sabotage and the one thing i wanted to give you guys is you it's okay to recognize it and to not trust your feelings it's okay to recognize that and not trust your emotions we do have that instinct to protect our kids and that's always going to be there and we do need, need to listen to an instinct to protect our kids but when they're safely playing outside and you can see them through the window and you have this thought of oh my gosh one of them's probably going to get hurt out there that's not necessarily true you don't have to believe that that is just you know your your upper limit if you will it's it's the it's the part where all of a sudden things are going good and and you don't like your brain is trying to manufacture this this thing that might could possibly maybe one day happen and it it's not the truth they're fine they're safe they're outside they're inside the the fence they're you know there's nothing out there that could hurt them i mean yeah sure they could fall but what's a scraped knee i mean kids do that and so um, I just want you guys I wanted to give you guys this because I feel like sometimes we do this and it's a habit um, to 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 bring ourselves back down to size over and over and over and I've been there and and to break through that is is hard but it starts with recognizing what is happening and going no this is my feeling but my feelings on this right now are not truth. My feelings are just my feelings. And I am going to submit my mind, I'm going to submit my will and my emotions to what the truth says. And the truth is we are safe. We are okay. We are growing. We are expanding. We are um, thriving in our new environment. And so brain, um, and this is a good exercise to do is to talk to your brain and go, you know what? Thank you for trying to protect me, but you know what? I'm okay. And this is okay. And we are safe and growth is good. And I want this. So that was something that I wanted to give you guys, um, today. I hope this was helpful. If you want my resources, like if you've been, um, trying to get out of your survival mode, if you've been trying to expand and increase and you feel like you're self-sabotaging yourself, and you want some of the resources that I went through to learn how to recognize when it's happening and what to do when we talk to ourselves um, and to try to bring us out of that, then send me a message real quick and I can share with you the resources I used um, because I feel like so many of us mamas, we call it postpartum, right? We call it extended postpartum. And I feel like that's just the survival mode instinct that we are unable to get out of ourselves until we recognize what it actually is there are steps to get out of that so anyway hope this was helpful <laughs> not wanting to be super long-winded but i hope this was helpful i will see you guys later i uh, hope you have a great day bye